Welcome back to my channel, She Says Happiness. I'm Mary Ellen, for those of you who don't know. And yeah, just wanna get stuck in today, share with you some of the things that I've been sewing, share with you some of the fabrics that have arrived and some of the plans that I may or may not have for those. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get stuck in. So where I left off last month, basically I shared with you some of the plans that I had. And the first thing then to share with you, because I know if you follow me here and you subscribe to this channel, you are um, always keen to see little pictures of Henry and how he's growing up. So the first thing that I did make last month was a little birth month seven months old um, top for Henry. And usually I've been using the Elm t-shirt or the strawberry sweater patterns from the Poppy and Jazz line. But this time I thought, let's just mix it up, try something new. I went through my digital files and I discovered I had um, one of the Waves and Wild patterns. It's the Lunar Tea. I think it's a free pattern. I think it is, I'll check that and I'll link it down below. Um, so yes, I used it and now it's a little tight. So I did make the size that he should have been. Um, he's seven months old and I think I made the six to 12 month size. It's about a week ago now, so I'm not remembering everything. Um, but it was incredibly tight and a little bit short still looked really really cute and you know it, it wasn't for longevity anyhow um but yeah next time definitely I'll be sizing up and that's the advice that I've been given by other people as well who have discovered that in waves and wild particularly for children always size up even though the size chart would have suggested that that would have been um big enough now I know that I will probably make a lot of children's outfits in the future. And I think, you know, whenever he's about two years old, um, I'll probably invest in a little child mannequin so I can make things properly and really well fit it. But he just grows out of everything so fast at the moment that I'm not too bothered. I'll just be a little bit more efficacious when I am making it next time to measure for his length because he's a very tall boy. He's off the scales for his height. Um, so yeah, I'll just be more diligent with that going, going forward. But it still looked really cute and it served its purpose as well. Uh, I'm wearing one of the other things that I have completed. So this is the Charm Patterns, what is the name of this dress? The Society Dress. You can tell I've been out in the rain and I'm just a little bit frazzled. So Ireland's decided that it is now autumn already. Um, but yes, this is a society dress. The society dress, I fell in love with the minute I saw it back when it was released in January. It was the opening, um, the opening pattern for the new theme for Gertie's Patreon this year. And it's essentially a 1940s inspired tea dress. There are a few different versions and variations that you can make to make it your own. I have kept mine very, very simple. So I have used the little puff sleeves with the little cuff detail. It's got a little pleat as well. There is also a bishop sleeve variation. I've made mine just knee length. Um, there's also a full length version if you want to go for all the drama. And you can also put on um, a hood as well if you want it to be like a, you know, a little bit extra. That's not really the look I'm going for. I'm very much dressing for modern living. So while I do love vintage reminiscence and fashion, I think it also has to be very wearable for me in the here and now. So yeah. It's more, sorry, I have a hair that's really annoying me. Um, I got blown away. I got absolutely blown away. Um, I tried to make myself look a little presentable before I came on here. But yes, I love this. I'm gonna slot, <laughs> I'm gonna slot in like a video, maybe a picture, just so you can see it. It's made in this gorgeous black velvet with these gold circles, which are basically made up of lots and lots of little dots. This is from Minerva, and it was an absolutely gorgeous fabric to work with. I absolutely loved it. And I can even stick a little link down below to this fabric so you can go and have a look. It comes in black and silver as well, which is also really pretty, but I, I just went for black and gold. It's like a 
just a staple in my wardrobe. So I made that. I also made the so Sew Over It Ruby skirt, which I don't think I have around me because it's been worn and thrown in the wash, I presume. Um, so yeah, if you are not a stranger to uh, my channel here, you'll know I am 99% of the time a dress person. I've always been a dress person. I've never wore trousers. I don't really wear skirts very often. I just find that with my shape, my height, the way in which my body is proportioned, that separates do not flatter me. Just for my waist cuts, they don't flatter me in the way a dress would. So I do tend to stay clear of it. But I don't know, I must have been feeling adventurous or something. Or maybe I was just in the mood for an easier make. That was probably it. And the ruby skirt from Sew Over It is a free pattern. If you subscribe to the newsletter, you can get your hands on this pattern. And it's very, very simple. It's a, a basic um, A-line skirt. It has a button placket up the front and it actually has an elasticated waist. So in terms of fitting, no huge deal there. Just find the size that is closest to you and the elastic at the back will do the rest of the work. So again, I made this in a viscose fabric from Minerva. It's one of their exclusive viscose fabrics from their own collection. And again, lovely to work with. I've made maybe two or three different things now from their own line of viscose fabrics and they always sew up really, really well. And then I had these lovely orange vintage buttons from Buffins and I love them. They just had the right shade of orange to go with some of the flowers in the skirt. So I used those in this. And yeah, I think I don't mind it. I'm not 100% of the opinion that skirts are for me, that separates are for me, but it allowed me to use a couple of things in my wardrobe already that maybe were not getting a lot of wear. So I've styled it with a couple of things in the last week. I've wore it with um, the Boleyn top from Stitch Witch Patterns and I've also worn it with a pearl cardigan, the Tilly in the Buttons pattern, um, in that lovely orange shade that you can see there in the picture. And yeah, I suppose it's just given me a little versatility. It's not something I think I'll make over and over again or anything like that, but it's definitely made me think a little bit more about, yeah, Purging outside my I am a dress person uh, personality. It's just it's just the way I am. And I've always been like that ever since I was a little girl. So I don't think much is going to change now. Um, but we'll see. In my last video, I shared with you then a couple of cashmere wrap patterns that I had been making. That gets me back on track. So I had made the... Belmont leggings and I am going to make them again with just a couple of little tweaks in the length measurements and I made the brattle top which I shared with you in my last video and if you look behind me here I have made another brattle top because just when I'm in the house doing chores and things like that or just walking the dogs this is a feasible thing in my wardrobe which I never really had before for me um I would really only have worn that kind of thing if I was going to the gym I would never have made it a part of my everyday wardrobe, but I suppose now when my focus is like 99% Henry and getting out of the door and, you know, when it comes to doing the basic things like the ironing or, some, you know, dusting around the house or taking the dogs for a dander around the park, I suppose I don't have to be wearing my normal regalia all the time. It's just very hard for me to separate who I am from the way I dress, but convenience is being called upon now and again. So I feel like I'm getting a little prepared for that. Um, but don't expect it to become like a, a regular thing. It'll be a one-off here and there that I'm sharing something a little bit more casual. But I have just a wee bit left over of the fabric that I used. And this was the really cool fabric that I used to make my brattle top that you see behind me. Um, I just loved it. But if you want to hear more about the brattle top, what I thought about it, um, you can go to my last vlog. I'll even put a little link in the description box below. Um, just so you know, the brattle top by Cashmere is one of their exclusive Cashmere Club patterns. 
and a couple of my future makes will also be um, from the club patterns and I'll share this with you but as a curvy sewist I just think being a part of the cashmere club makes makes sense um, I always find with cashmere that 90% of the work is done for you if I go to most other pattern companies and take a pattern there's always a host of changes I need to make to the pattern pieces and at least one toile before I get started Sometimes it can take three or four twalls just to get the fit right. And with cashmere, it's usually one twall, maybe like move the bust apex point or something like that and that's it done and dust it. There's very, very little I need to change. So yeah, to me, it's a no brainer. And when I first started um, sewing, cashmere patterns didn't actually really appeal to me because you know, when, when you see a pattern, you're just seeing like two, three images of a certain fabric, of a certain style and a certain body. And that's not you. That's not your style. That's not your body. Um, so it's hard to visualize. But as I started to make cashmere patterns, I started to realize that I just needed to ignore, um, you know, the fabrics and stuff that I saw. They just, I don't know, they just didn't appeal to that side of me that loves vintage styling. But the patterns can all be styled whichever way you want to, just with a couple of changes. Um, and even the fabric that you choose will give you the feel that you want. I mean, this this velvet, I could easily make a brattle top in this and it would look a bit more like a period um, reminiscent piece. You know, it, it's all about the choices that you make. And I think that's what's so liberating about sewing. Um, yeah, you're not put into a box and you don't have to make things the way you see them. You can always branch out and go a little crazy, uh, which I do all the time. You know, I'll, I'll take a pattern that's intended for woven or intended for stretch and adapt it so I can use them the other way around or whatever. It's a, about being creative, really, isn't it? And thinking outside of the box. So the brattle top, I think, is lovely. I'm digressing. I'm just chatting away to you as I do. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with that pattern. So I've got a couple more. The Kinetin dress is one that I'm dying to make. And if I can remember the name of the new one, do you know, because I'm just not thinking clearly because I've been running around all day. Um, the latest pattern, Franconia, is also up there as well. So. I know a lot of people at the moment are making the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress and I have that pattern. I don't buy Tilly and the Buttons patterns very often, um, namely for the reason that um, I don't really, I don't know, I don't really like the styles. They're not for me. I also like my makes to be a bit more challenging and I find with a couple of those patterns in the past that they're made to appeal to beginners and so the finish is not what I would like and then I just get frustrated and I don't wear those garments um, but I did buy the Mabel because I wanted to try the sheer dress but the Franconia looks more up my street so I think that's the one that I'm going to make first and I'll maybe um, have a look at Mabel in the future. I find the sizing um, also puts me off. I don't find it to be consistent um, when it comes to Tilly and the Buttons patterns Whereas with cashmere, I get exactly what they say I'm going to get. And their size calculator, if you haven't used it, is usually bang on. Um, and I know a few people who have made the Mabel dress have told me that they could easily have sized down one, maybe two sizes. And yeah, who has time for that? I don't have time for that. So we'll, we'll go with the Franconia and I'll share that with you hopefully in the next few weeks. Anyhow. That's what I've been making. Um, you know, that that's not bad for someone who only gets a little bit of time now and again. I'm actually feeling quite accomplished this week. Um, even more accomplished in what I'm going to share with you next. So, I do have some nice fabrics to share with you too. I have some plain fabrics here as well. So, I got some basics um, from my favourite shop, 
jelly stitches um, so these are bits and pieces that I need for an upcoming project which I'll talk to you about in a second so what I've got here is some black cotton jersey it's the best quality cotton jersey that I've ever you know ever got so I always buy it from Jenny and that is to make a plain brattle so it's not urgent it's just something that I thought would be really really handy in my wardrobe then I've also got as I was saying I'm going to remake the Belmont leggings by Cashmeret that I chatted about in my last vlog so again got more of the same fabric because I'll still wear the ones I made um you know around the house and doing things I need to do with walking the dogs but I wanted to make another one just to to get the fit just right and I think I need to take out in two different places so both on the leg and um, around my stomach then I need to take out a couple of inches so those wee adjustments just need to be made for me to feel more comfortable in that pattern so I've got more of the same fabric because it was an absolute joy to sew and then the other fabric that I've got here from Jenny is this absolutely beautiful red so if you saw my last vlog, you'll see I finally finished my sew over at Dorothy jacket. And again, not my usual style, but I've been thinking, you know, what kind of utilitarian garments do I need in my wardrobe? And I'm not very good at thinking practically. I have an incredible wardrobe um, of clothes. Like even before I started sewing, I kind of have a weird way of, of dressing. And for most people, it can come across as a little bit inappropriate. I mean, this this is what I wear if I'm going out for coffee, for instance. Um, and I, I, I've had days where I've gone to work in a dress and people are like, oh, are you off today? Or, are, you, are you going to a wedding? Or um, I'll walk down the street, it's like, oh, you're dressed for opera. I'm like, no, I'm going to the office. I literally grab what makes me feel happy in the moment and if I'm stuck on time I grab the first dress that's on the reel because I have a wardrobe full of things that I love um now that's been put on hold whenever I got pregnant and you know in the last few months I've had to be a wee bit more mindful and maybe that's why I've thought about the gaps in my wardrobe because I haven't been frivolous and I haven't just grabbed the first pretty thing that I've seen and yeah, maybe it's made me a bit more mindful. Um, so yeah, outerwear went high up the list and I had lots of gorgeous like cropped vintage style jackets like the princess coat um, from Charm Patterns and things like that. But I did need something practical for walking the dogs. So the Dorothy jacket was up there on the list of things to make and I did it. And you can hear all about it in my last vlog. But this is an absolutely beautiful shade of red. So this will go well in my wardrobe. And this is actually an ex barber um, waterproof cotton. So this will be an excellent make. It will do the job perfectly. So I have that and that's going up on my high priority list. And probably one of the things that I'll start on first actually. So I have it ready for the autumn. So then the next fabric that I have to share with you is an art gallery um, cotton lawn and um, this is from their is it spooky and witchy let me see yeah spooky and witchy collection and it's basically this print here with all of these files and potions on it and I just love the vibrancy of those colors against that charcoal black background. This I got from Fleury Ours. And I'm of the opinion that Halloween is not just for one day of the year. So it's not like I'm gonna make that and only wear it once. This will be rotated as often as I see fit. And now that I'm getting back to my normal measurements, still a wee bit to go, like I still have a bit to go, um, but I think I'm going to sew up a sew over marguerite dress, which is one of my all time favorite patterns. I like it because it doesn't break up the prints. So it's a really, really great pattern to use if you don't want, you know, to, to break up the flow of the print on the fabric. And because it's just like a one piece with a couple of darts, it does that. And then just a lovely gathered skirt. So there's not really any 
messing with the directional um, print. So that's probably what I'm going to do with that. And while I was there, I picked up a little remnant of this. I shared this one with you before. And this is a Cloud 9 um, cotton. So it's 100% cotton. It's organic. I think it's called Edgar's Writing Room. And again, has a real Halloween vibe to it. But for me, I'm a librarian. It's got books on it. I can wear it whenever I like. Um, you know, I'm, I'm known as the book doctor <laughs> uh, with my um, PhD in, in literature. So I can, I can wear that. Nobody's going to question me. But yeah, I picked that up. I already have about two and a half, three meters of that in my stash. This is a remnant, I think, of about 1.5 meters. And I thought, well, in addition to making the dress that I thought about making, I can also now make a blouse. So if I start to mix and match some separates, that will probably get turned into a patina blouse, which is the Friday Pattern Company um, blouse pattern that I fell in love with last year. And I'm hoping will fit me soon. It's just buttoning across here at the moment. Still an issue. So we'll see how we go with that. Then I have from Dalston Mill, I believe. I've made a couple of dresses from this in the past. I have made an Ashleen dress by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I've made a sew for a Marguerite dress. Um, they just, again, at the moment are not fitting, but I love this print. It's just licorice all sorts and I love those little things. So I thought I'll get it because I saw it. It was like particularly at eight pounds a meter or something. So it's in my stash if I want to make a dress with it. I'm not sure what, but something will get made with it and I'll get to wear it um, hopefully soon. Because it's one of those prints that I kind of like wish I was picking out at the moment and haven't been able to. Then I've got a selfless, a selfless fabric. So this is a little cotton jersey from Lily and Mimi. And it's got these beautiful kind of um, preppy bears there I thought they were really really cute and I'm going to make a little two-piece outfit or a pair of pajamas out of it for um, my little Henry haven't decided yet I may just make a wee pair of joggers and try the linen tee size up or maybe two sizes up um, by the time it gets made he's just growing up a weed or just a pair of pajamas but it was absolutely adorable I love that kind of denim -y look but it is just cotton jersey so it'll be really really comfy to wear what else do I have to show you? Okay, so this, this is just another cute. I do have a thing for quilting cottons. I love quilting cottons when it comes to my wardrobe because I love the colours, I love the vibrancy, and I love just the array of prints that are available to me whenever I go for, um, you know, a quilting cotton. So this is, um, trying to think, trying to think. I was going to say Irene and Lewis, but it's not. It's Lewis and Irene. And this we... Um, the sweet print if I can just get it the right way up for you just screams autumn to me and as I say I'm in the mood for autumn and I just love those little field mice they're really adorable and the little berries and the foliage I just loved it and it's just going to make a really nice dress whether it's the fringe or marguerite just something really simple for me that I don't need to make too many adjustments to but is there whenever the autumn draws in so this I believe was one of the first collections um, Lewis and Irene ever released, but they have kind of like recolored it, I think, um, redesigned it, added a few additions to the collection. And if I was a quilter, I think I would be making one of these up for the darker nights, but I'm not a quilter. I don't have the patience to be a quilter. Kudos to anyone who is, um, maybe someday, but today it's not that day. Yeah, but that's going to make a really cute dress. And the plan as well for me is to knit up something in that gorgeous rust colour um, just to go with some of my more autumnal makes this year. And then the rest of the fabrics that I've got here are all from Rainbow Fabrics. And if I didn't tell you, I got this one from Empress Mills that I've started shopping with recently. Um, they have a lovely selection of um, fabrics. Great haberdashery as well. I'm buying a lot of haberdashery from them um but just keep an eye on empress mills over on instagram because every week they have like a special offer and i actually got this fabric with like 30 percent off um so they always have like a fabric of the week 
and this whole collection was 30% off so it was a bargain yeah so as I say then the next ones are from Rainbow Fabrics so as I may have mentioned before um Simon decided to get a caravan so we have a caravan so I picked up a couple of jersey prints just to make some nice pajamas from um, and the first is this little bird print I just love the vibrancy of the blue and the green against that bit of pink I thought it was really really pretty so I have that whether I make pajamas or even a nice little dressing gown I just thought that's something lovely to have and then the other is this kind of little um, burnt orange flower with uh, polka dots a wee bit retro thought it was kind of cute so yeah, that's to make lounge slash sleepwear slash sleepwear S's get me every time. So anyhow, I digress. Then I've got a couple of fabrics here um, that I have absolutely no, no purpose for. I just love this color. I love this kind of mulberry plum color and I love gauze. So it's a double gauze. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, something floaty maybe even um try the sew over a penny dress with a wee collar I haven't made it in double gauze I'm sure it'll be fine when I stabilize the pieces with interfacing when it's stabilized but yeah just a lovely plain because as you can tell I tend to go more for prints than planes but I'm just noticing those are actually a very similar color so I'm doing something right I'm trying to be a little bit more together uh, when buying things so that my wardrobe's not just all over the place. But I like it being all over the place. That works for me because it's always something totally different um, every day. And then I have another kind of Halloween-y fabric. So again, it's not for Halloween, but it's just that kind of aesthetic. It's this gorgeous deep purple, not a color I generally go for. It's coming up blue a little whenever I try to take photos or video, but it's more of a a purple and it's just got these moons and caps on it and yeah I think it'll make a lovely floaty dress not sure what yet but I'll hopefully get that sewn up so it's ready for the autumn months as well get a few of those in the pre-wash later on I think and then just when I thought I was finished buying things for the month Rainbow Fabric sent out an email to say that all of their fabrics that were remaining from the season were like $4.99 per meter meter which is ridiculous um almost too ridiculous I just don't think fabric should be selling that cheaply and yet who am I to say no when it is so I got two two more fabrics and these are more like for occasion wear which I don't really make very often because whenever I started sewing we were at the height of our lockdowns the pandemic had struck and we were all staying home and everyone was making secret pajamas and then you know when life started to get back to normal and we were all just getting into our flow again I got pregnant so I was back into wearing secret pajamas um so maybe this is the year that I branch out a little bit maybe this is the year I dress up a little bit more that would be nice so yeah I'll share these two with you. Okay, so the first print is rather special. It's not really a print. Okay, so the first of the two fabrics is actually very special. It's a rose gold sequin fabric. So it's rose gold sequins on like an olive silk mesh, um, organza. And this fabric is an ex-designer fabric. So this was actually designed for Galvin and if you're familiar with Galvin you'll know that they are well known for their kind of like long floating tubular evening gowns um, you know with no straps and if straps are very very thin spaghetti straps just really opulent and yeah very high on the the glamour sequin um, mark so this is just a lovely stripe the rose gold against the green I think is beautiful so it would need lined because I'm not going out with my you know my underwear on show um for some people that would look amazing not on me but look at it it's actually lovely now I've no idea what I'm going to make with it but 
I love the color. It's my color. I just kind of like rose golds, coppers, greens. They work for me. Um, but yeah, I have it. It's going to be in my stash. Should an occasion arise and I just want to make something a little dressier. Um, yeah. But £4.99 a metre. When, when the inspiration comes, at least the fabric will be here. So, you know, I'm guessing probably it didn't pass quality control or something like that. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it apart from the fact maybe it's a back. You know, the tension wasn't great on some of the lines of stitching or something. I don't know. Or it was just indeed left over. They had no need of it. But it's actually lovely. Or maybe they went with a different colourway. So for the sake of £4.99 a metre, I think I have like four metres here. Um, and I'll be able to make a beautiful gown out of it. I've made such a mess that I now have to clear up. One more fabric to go. And this is just to make like a 1950s inspired cocktail dress for the festive period. I know that's what it's gonna be, you know, for Christmas, New Year, that kind of thing. And my phone keeps buzzing and I really just have to learn to ignore it. This is a jacquard fabric. So it's a rose print. I love a floral. And it's got Lurex sewn in there as well. So you can kind of see the rose gold or pink. can't actually tell if it's rose gold or pink um, threads. But sorry, that's the reverse there. So let me just open this up and show you that lovely print. And to me, this feels very, very vintage. I'm thinking of making um, the boat neck dress from Gertie's um, book. I can't remember which one. Again, I'll link it in below. Um, but yeah, it's just a classic like, boat neck dress, short sleeves, gallard skirt, but it'll look really, really striking in, in this print. I've made it a couple of times before. If I find a picture of one or two of them, I'll put it in here so you can see. It's just lovely. And that will be perfect for, for seasonal, for seasonal make. So that's the roundup of what I've got. When I'll ever have time to do all of that, who knows? But we'll see, we'll see. We can always just do what we can do. I mean, I am not one of these people that goes out and says, I need to make this, 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 and this, and this, and this. There are things I would like to make, and uh, that's what goes on in my head. And then there's the things to get around to making. And usually it's dictated by, you know, weather, season, occasion. So we'll see what happens first. I do know that I'm going to get my um, Dorothy jacket cut out of that red X barber stock because that's going to be really useful as the wet weather continues to come in. And while I love the black version, it's not one that you would wear during these months because it really is quite heavy. It's lined with fleece, whereas this, um, this one will be a bit more wearable for all year rather than just the colder months but that's where we are um not sure what's happening next in my little sewing space i do have a couple of fabrics that are sitting ready to be cut but i have five or six patterns out um and i can't just decide which to use um it might be a case i remember whenever i first started teaching and um, one of the professors that i was teaching with warned me about marking season and how awful it is and how the temptation really is there to just take uh, that pile of papers and throw them down the stairs and grade them according to the order they fall in. Of course, no one would actually do that. I, I would like to think they wouldn't actually do that, but it's that same kind of frustration when you're feeling so terribly non-committal and you don't know which thing to pick. So maybe I'll just close my eyes and pick one and that's the thing it's gonna be. So yeah, I'll have something to show you in any case. But yeah, just again, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for interacting with me. Uh, it's nice to know that at least some of you enjoy what you see here and it's always really encouraging as well. So thank you so much for your kind comments, which just tend to be, you know, commonplace around here. I really do appreciate all of you being here. So I'm not just like talking to myself. I am kind of isolated with my hobby. Um, among my circle, I'm really the only stitcher. Um, I don't think anyone else really truly understands um, that aspect of my personality when it comes to dressmaking. I do have, what have I not? 
not something. I do have a good friend who is very into cross stitch and crochet and things like that. And she's dabbled in a little bit of dressmaking, but it's not her main thing. So she can kind of understand, but again, I'm not going to bore with all the details that only a dressmaker really wants to hear. So I do appreciate you guys being here. Anyhow, I'll go and try to actually cut something out and get the ball rolling again for when I'm next back. Thank you, as I say, lovely to catch up with you all. Pop me a little um, comment down below if you have any suggestions for any of these fabrics. A couple of you have made suggestions for fabrics in the past and I've purchased those patterns and hopefully you'll see those in the future. But yeah, I'm always here to be inspired. So hook me up with any patterns that you think are perfect for any of the fabrics that are here. Anything that you've made that you think would suit me again, can you please let me know because I am being very non-committal at the moment and it would be nice to have someone just go, this would work for you. I will listen. Uh, so take care and happy sewing. Um, hopefully lots of sewing happening for you all this weekend and hopefully a little bit for me as well. But for now it's over and out. Friday night, I even have to cook, which is great. We never cook on a Friday. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and have some me time and play with Henry. We've got some new toys today. So we're going to go and break into those and some new books to get stuck into. And yeah, catch up with you all soon. Take care. Bye.